And now to the papers, as ever, that story you were just hearing about in the news on, on the legal advice is all over the front page of Sunday Telegraph. Labour and DUP unite, not a phrase you hear very often, to force May's hand. And pictures of the streets of Paris ablaze. Again, the streets of Paris ablaze on the Sunday Times and again revealed. Geoffrey Cox's Brexit legal advice could sink May, says the Sunday Times. Many things have failed to sink May so far. And the Sunday Express, at least, is among the papers coming out in her defence. Britain faces Brexit trade disaster if her vote is is if a deal is voted down. A lot of campaigning by the Prime Minister all over the country and all over the papers. The Observer there, key Labour figures urge party to prepare for a new Brexit poll. That's the so-called people's vote or further referendum now being discussed, we're told, inside the shadow cabinet. So an awful lot to talk about. Amanda, let's start with the front of the Sunday Times. Yes, well this I is the key story this morning. I think that Theresa May has obviously been getting private lessons from, um, from Tyson. Crikey, knock that woman down and she <laughs> just keeps getting up again. And Kay. as he kept saying after the fight, he said, I'm a winner. Can't people just see it? Well, Theresa May is trying to prove she's a winner too. Um, this really interesting story today that um, this advice, this very controversial advice that the Prime Minister is saying that she will not disclose in full about the deal. Yeah. Um, to, be, to be clear, in some respects, it's not terribly surprising because you read the deal and it's clear that when you're in the back, when Britain is in the backstop, we can't get out by ourselves. Yes. We're stuck there. Yes. But I think... Jeffrey Cox's advice, we think, just puts that in very stark and brutal terms. Yes, and, and this is giving um, the Brexiteers and the Remainers who are unhappy um, the chance to say, and Labour to say, you know, this is not acceptable, we're not going to back the deal. But it's the Sunday Times is packed with, you know, there's evidently going to be a meeting of Cabinet Ministers this week to discuss a Plan B. Insiders say the only Plan B for Theresa May is to call another general election. Mm. Pippa, um, you're starting next week as the Mirror's political oh editor. Yeah. It's a heck of a week to be starting. It's going to be the most extraordinary week in Westminster, isn't it? Well, it's, we have quite a lot of extraordinary weeks in Westminster That's at true. the moment. That's but this, true. this possibly, the 10 days ahead of us are going to be particularly extraordinary. Yeah. Obviously, culminating next Tuesday in that vote on the, on the, vote on the meaningful, um, on the Brexit withdrawal plans. Uh, and the future declaration. So it looks very likely at the moment that the Prime Minister, in fact, almost certain that the Prime Minister is going to lose that vote. So all the focus now is on what happens then. Yeah. I want to ask you both about this because again and again on this and other programmes, <laughs> we say it's the end for <laughs> Theresa May. She's <laughs> finished this time. And, and she, of course she isn't. She moves on to the next stage in this strange computer game. Um, but this time there's no paper and no commentator anywhere which seems to think that she will win this vote, looking at the numbers. I've not met a single person, both in Westminster or outside, that thinks she's going to. Now the numbers suggest at the moment is there might be up at 100 Conservative rebels. You know, you could half that number and she'd still lose badly. And particularly with that number of Conservative yeah. rebels, it puts her in a very precarious position. As the leader as well of the Conservative Party, because, you know, they can, a lot of them who, you yeah. know, that's all the letters that you need to, to trigger a vote. But this is great, Andrew. This is just so fabulous. They're talking about um, that she's actually used the campaign trace with the, the the tour she's been on the last couple of weeks as a prelude to practice. And look at this. This, this is Theresa yes. May. The, the Sunday in a black Times thinks that this, that this kind of selling Brexit tour is a dry run for yes. a general election. Yes. And if she loses that vote, she'll stand up immediately and call a general election. Exactly. A Christmas election. We've never had right. that before. <laughs> and know. Labour would love that because obviously that's what they've pushed for. But it is rather the nuclear button strategy from the oh. Prime Minister and Conservative MPs, even those who vehemently oppose her and her deal, are bound to resist. Is that. How would the Tories do in such a general election, Amanda? Well, there's quite an interesting poll here that's in the, in the Telegraph that says if she did call a snap election, um, they said that the Tories would probably um, get about three more seats than Labour, which means it's so all over for them. A completely them. hung parliament. A completely hung parliament, and the Scots would, if they um, threw their weight in yeah. with Labour, then it's all over. But yeah. Of course, there are lots of different they? polls, but that, that would suggest that Labour could form a government with yes. the SNP. But the yes. problem there, of course, is that even if it was a confidence and supply, more informal arrangement of the type that the PM has with the DUP mm -hmm. rather than a formal coalition, that, um, that it's almost certain that the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon wouldn't agree to going into that unless there was some guarantee in return from Labour that there'd be another referendum on Scottish independence. And you can bet your bottom dollar that irrespective of how Jeremy Corbyn might feel personally about giving the Scottish people another vote on that, the Labour Party as a whole, not least because of the electoral effect that might have in terms of Labour seats in Scotland, would resist it extremely strongly.
Now, if the Prime Minister is looking for cheer anywhere, then she might reflect that she has got much more support in the press than she might have expected. I showed the front page of the Sunday Express there, Amanda, but there's an extraordinary I double know. spread in it's the Mail on Sunday, which has become a major cheerleader for the it's Prime Minister in a way we haven't seen. Just it is extraordinary. Just I mean, we had the front page, um, then we've got inside, um, you know, nine days to save Brexit, supporting the Prime Minister, and then this letter that they've... Um, the Mail on Sunday have um, given a list of all the, um, the MPs that are mostly the ones, I think it's the ones that are likely, likely to, to vote, vote against. To vote against. Yes. Um, so they've kind of named and shamed them. And then they've got this cut out and send off letters. So all you do is put your, um, you know, your So you MP's identify name the MP. And send it off to your MP, you sign it, but then they've given a helpful way of sending it via um, email as well. But it is extraordinary support I can't support remember for anything May. like this from a newspaper before. No, but I think um, the Mail, both the Mail and the Mail on Sunday, um, well, the Mail has supported Theresa May since she was Prime Minister. Mm. And it just continues. I mean, mm. a firm belief that this is um, the best deal and the uh, alternative is disastrous. Yeah, let me ask you about the DUP Labour yeah. conversation on the legal advice. Mm -hmm. How serious is that for the Prime Minister? Because there are, there's, there's talk that she could be in contempt of Parliament if she doesn't publish the full advice. Yes, and obviously they've resisted that um, so far. But what's happening is that the DUP Labour and um, the other smaller parties are writing to the Speaker and privately he seems to have made it clear that it would be in contempt of parliament. What that actually means for the government, I don't think any of us know, because timing is so, is everything so frenzied at the moment in Westminster. I mean, who knows where we'll be in a week's time, let alone oh a yeah. fortnight or three weeks time. So I think they're just banking on being able to put up with the, the mm. anger of the opposition for now. Let me ask both of you, because you're both very well plugged in about, we're all assuming, first of all, that this vote takes place. But if you're the prime minister and you're facing losing by maybe a hundred votes, mm. would you actually hold the vote in the first place. In other words, is there a possibility that come December the 11th, the vote doesn't actually happen at all? She goes back to Brussels and says, I can't do this. I think it would be extremely problematic. Even in these chaotic times, that would be the ultimate in chaos. And I think what is much more likely is that the pricing defeat in, so that they're going to go on the 11th, they expect to lose, and then they have a plan B. I think to do anything other than that would really preempt a real, uh, possibly a constitutional crisis. But then crisis. if you think, um, I, I agree, but think on the other hand, if it's deferred, then they've got their three weeks Christmas holiday coming up. So then you have a whole like near five weeks before that they'd even be back to, to do another but what vote. What does that change? Does, oh, it, does just it not just embed those who May. oppose the deal? Theresa May is it fantastic at pushing things off into the future. I mean, that's always part of her tactic yeah. is to pro mm. not procrastinate, but you know, to Delay. keep negotiate, mm. negotiate, negotiate, and find ways of delaying things. Yeah. But you know, it's. Um, but they okay. are extraordinary days ahead. It struck me looking at the front pages that it's almost sweet the way in, in a period of crisis we revert to our kind of 18th century origins. Britain has a parliamentary crisis and the French tear up the streets of Paris. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And um, if I can the find gilets my jaunes, iPad, the gilets jaunes, but after the yellow vests, the sort of security vests that they're wearing, um, this all started as a social media campaign um, in, in October in opposition to Emmanuel Macron's uh, fuel plans to um, increase fuel duty. And it is, but it is, it is sort of spiralled into a much bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, protest movement. It's like a popular movement, it's isn't it? A, a popular movement. grassroots movement yeah. of yes. people that it's feeling that the government isn't listening to their views and isn't concerned about how um, how they're suffering and how they yes. feel that they don't have um, enough to, it, it, in terms of cost of living, to be able to get by. A a and and the, the far right are on board for this too. It reminds me slightly of what happened that right at the beginning of the new Labour period. Remember that big fuel protest when Tony yeah. Blair had to turn round from a tour and come rushing back to Downing Street because all the lorries were blocking the motorways. Yeah, but we weren't throwing burning tires. We weren't. We weren't. <laughs> the really French always okay. have, have always had a very That's particular fair. style. The workers' protests tend yeah. to be a lot more dramatic than very, ours have ever been. Very quickly, Amanda, because we're running out of time already. Let's move on to the Archbishop of Canterbury, who will yes. be joining me shortly. Um, it's great to see him here today. And um, evidently, he's going to talk on Songs of Praise, one of my favourite shows, uh, about his own childhood um, when his... Um, I won't um, steal his thunder, um, but about how he understands from a very personal level the deprivation of children whose parents are poor or neglecting them. His father was an alcoholic. And he says, we've all got to you know, make sure we look after other people at Christmas. A bit like your beginning of the show, Andrew. 
And, um, and he surprised quite a lot of people already because obviously at the TUC conference uh, earlier this autumn, he made quite a passionate speech, a very passionate speech, very outspoken about austerity and about the importance of the government making sure that the poorest were looked after and took quite, people, uh, quite a lot of people aback with that okay. very political intervention. Super, super quickly, the snowman, everyone's oh, favourite. This is so, this is the best news. A lovely story. Okay, this is just the best news. Here we go. Um, he's been alone for so many years, the snowman's going to have a girlfriend. <laughs> and look at her, isn't she cute? Other um, artists have, have, have involved themselves in the great story. <laughs> so that, there's a cheerful note.